paying attention? So the question is literally how many solutions? The idea is we have already talked about this, um, but ideally we can be able to look at a set of equations and decide how many solutions they can be. Now, these are all linear systems. So we've already talked about this. You know, the solution of a, a linear system is where the two lines meet. All right. So if we put these um, equations into Desmos, so for instance, we've got um, y equals 2x plus 1. And then we've got y equals negative x plus 7. All right. Now, that is the solution. My computer's going slow because of the video. But how many solutions are there? One. 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 OK. If I put the next one in, 2y plus 8 equals x. I'm just going to switch those two off. And then uh, 4y's minus 2x equals negative 16. All right, you will notice same line. So how many solutions? Infinite. 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 Okay. Um, and the third set, we've got 6x equals 20 minus 2y. And we've got y plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. And what do you notice? They're parallel. Parallel lines. So how many solutions? Zero. Zero. All right. So what we've got here then, um, well, actually, my battery was running low. What we've got here is a set of equations, and we can determine how many solutions there are. Um, oh. Yeah, so if you just click the color alert, you can switch them on and off. Oh, sorry. You've got... There's a squiggle. And yeah. All right, sorry, I, yeah, I should have realized. Um, so what that means is that the first set, all right, so this is uh, what we want to be able to do, is we want to be able to look at the equations and go, well, could I predict that before graphing? All right, because if I know there's no solutions, for instance, there's no point trying to find any. So I know that y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals negative x plus 7 had what we say is one unique solution. Is there any way of looking at those equations and saying, yes, I know there will be one solution? Um, uh, yeah. Go on then. They're not parallel. And How do I know they're not parallel? Because Different right, that's all we need to know. As soon as we see that it is a different gradient, okay? It's not parallel and it's not the same one. Exactly. Yeah. Different gradients. <laughs> so gradients are different. As soon as it's a different gradient, we don't need to do anything. No, I, I, you're giggling and stuff. I don't know why. Um. Different gradient means the lines will not be parallel. They have to be crossing at some point, right? So we know if the gradient is different, this one has a, an m of 2, and this one has an m of negative 1. We therefore know they must have a solution. All right. What we were going to do, though, is then look at the next one. 2y plus 8 is x, and... Um, 4y minus 2x is negative 16. Now, what I asked you to do is rewrite them as um, gradient intercept form. So what's this one in gradient intercept form? Um, y equals uh, x minus 4. So let's do, it's two y's. Um, we minus the 8, so we get equals x minus 8. We then... Ah. Divide by 2, and we get 1y is a half x minus 4. Right? The second equation, 
you'll start getting used to me writing these ones and twos, especially after we've done this. The second one, we've got four y's minus two x equals minus 16. Actually, I shouldn't rewrite that, it's a waste of time. What should I do first to rearrange it? Add two x. Add two x. Okay, that gives me four y's is two x minus 16. And then divide by four. Gives me one y is, two divided by four is? Half x. Half x. Minus 16 divided by four is minus four. So now you can see they're parallel. One Wait, not parallel, there's, there's same line. Okay. <laughs> same line, which means, okay, we could say um, there are an infinite number of solutions, but you know, um, in fact, we'll just leave it at that in a moment. An infinite number of solutions because they're the same line. Basically. All right. Does that make sense? Clear enough to see? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the final ones, we've got 6x equals 20 minus 2y. And we've got y plus 3x minus 5 is 0. So number 1, let's have a look at it. Add 2y. So add 2y and... Subtract 6x, so we've got 2y's is 20 minus 6x. And then we divide by 2, so we end up with y equals 10 minus 3x. Everyone following this? We're doing it quite quick, but yes. is everyone following it? Yeah. Uh, number 2, add 5, subtract 3x. Wait, yeah. One, one. How did you get x minus eight? Yeah, we add five. Up here, look. I'm here. Well, it was plus eight. I've subtracted eight. Yeah. So this one, we add five. We subtract three x. So we end up with y equals five minus three x. So I just rewrite it under here. How many solutions did these ones have? Okay. Zero solution. Oh. And how can I tell that? Yeah. But. Good. Same gradient. But different y intercept. So we can see. Um, same gradient is the negative 3, but the uh, starting point, the different y-intercept, well, that's 10 and that one's at 5. So if they have exactly the same gradient, but they start at a different point, then they're obviously going to have no solutions whatsoever. So again, you can see how useful the gradient intercept form is, right? Um, so that's just... I mean, you're going to talk more about this as you go in like next year and the year after, but having an understanding of the number of solutions. Now, I've rattled through that pretty quickly because I'm kind of hoping with the number of lessons we've done on rewriting these equations and things, you're probably okay with that at this stage. Right? And the, we all good with typing the equation in, just finding the solution, you know, you understand it was one, none, or input, yeah? All right, so the reason why I said I, I wanted to rattle through that quickly is because actually we're going to move away from graphs now. So we'll keep our laptops open because I want you to be able to verify your answers graphically, but you can push them to one side or in front of you for the moment. Okay, so what we're going to look at is... We're going to solve, <laughs> so the notes will be in the video if you want to catch up at home, you can always fill the gaps in rather than worry about doing it now. This is the important stage now. 
So we are going to solve the linear system using what's called a substitution method. Now, the fundamental principle behind this is really important for you to grasp. If you try and just memorize a process, rather than understanding what we're doing and why we're allowed to, you won't fully understand it. Okay? So what I'm going to do, like I said before, is um, I'm going to rewrite the question and I'm going to number my equations. This is important. So equation number one is 4x subtract 3y's equals negative 11. And equation number two is negative 5x plus 2y's equals 12. Now, I'm not going to expect you to have an answer at the moment because you're going to gain more and more experience. But what do you think? No solutions, one solution, infinite number of solutions. Because if we think one, no solution, there's one. no point. Might as well stop. One. one solution. One probably, because that's obviously the point in the book asking the question. But can you look at that and think, mm, I, yeah, I can tell that's going to be. They're different gradients, right? Yeah. Sure. Well, for instance, I don't even need to look at the negative 11. Like, this is going to be a gradient. I'm going to add the three y, so it's going to be 4 divided by the 3, right? And this one is going to be, add the 5x, so it's going to be 5 divided by 2 to figure out the m, right? So you look at that, 4 divided by 3, 5 divided by 2, different, right? Yeah. So we kind of thinking the... Gradient is different, which if the gradient is different, we know one solution. So it's good to go. We're good to go. Let's carry on with this. Right. Let me ask you this again. What does it mean to be able to solve this system of equations? To find the solution. What's the solution? The point oh, where the two lines intersect. Okay. And, and what do we know you... about the point where they intersect? It's the point they share, and because they share that point, we know something else. Oh, we had this discussion the other day. I was explaining it to someone in the other group over here. Then we talked about it. If you put, pick a particular x value and you stick it into both equations, you will get the same y value out. Everywhere else, if I put the same x value in, the y value will be different. But for the solution, if I put an x value into both, the y value will be the same. Yeah? So they share an x and a y coordinate. Which, mean, which is important because for those two equations, the x is exactly the same, right? And the y is exactly the same. Are you happy with that? Yeah. That's the fundamental principle that I'm about to apply. All right. So the first step I am going to do is this. And you might think, why am I doing that? But I'm going to tell you, I am going to rewrite, okay, I'm just going to choose um, number one. Rewrite number one to make, I think I'm going to do it as, make it x equals. So correctly, in using correct vocab, I'm going to do what we call make x the subject. So I'm going to rewrite number one, not number two, I'm going to rewrite number one to make it x equals. Okay. Well, could you do that? Yeah. Just add 
So 4x minus 3y is negative 11. First step would be to add 3y. So you get 4x is, is negative 11 plus 3y. Divide by 4. So x equals negative 11 divided by 4 plus 3 divided by 4. Now, this is a question in the book, and I'm doing it because that's what it said to do. I wouldn't use this method for this one, but we'll carry on. This is going to be a, really, a challenging one. All right. Are you happy with that, by the way? The fact that x equals that? Okay, I can rewrite that. Would you be happier to read it as, actually I could put it as 3y first minus 11 all divided by 4. Is that neater, tidier, happier? Yeah. Right. Are you okay that it's x equals, because we've done it y equals all the time, right? I could have done y equals, by the way. I just chose not to because I wanted you to see that you are allowed to do it as x equals. Any ideas what you think I might do next? I've already divided by. Yeah, we've done this. Before. I'm going to use a substitution method. Now, what a substitution method okay, means is you replace one thing with another. All right. So, because I know that x can be replaced by 3y minus 11, why, can, why am I allowed to replace an x with that? Because x equals, they're, they're the same thing, right? So I am going to replace x in the 2, number 2. Okay. So my next step will be to use this in equation 2. So, what does equation 2 become? Well, equation 2 becomes negative 5 times x. And x is all of this. So it's 3y minus 11 all divided by 4. Then I plus two y's and it equals 12. So at the moment, all I've done is I've taken this, all right, and replaced it in the x. Just rewritten it, yeah? So some people like think, oh, well, if I put brackets around that, that kind of shows me. All right. Any ideas what we can do now? Uh, Adam? Put what in the calculator? Into? Into Desmos? What is the problem if I do that? It doesn't matter actually. But if I put one equation into Desmos, what will I get? A line. One line. I need two lines to find out where two lines cross. Do you need a line? No, well, remember this is not a graphical <coughs> method. This is an algebraic method. If I wanted to use Desmos to solve this, I'd have just chucked the two equations to start with in, wouldn't I? So this is an algebraic method. Well, what I do is we use the skills that you've got before, which is we now solve this. So, what can we do? Divide by two. Well, I've got y's. I need to. Well, actually, I think the first thing to get rid of is. Yeah, I could do that. The only problem is with that, uh, Miles, is that this divide by four and this times by negative five don't help each other. So what I would do is. We don't know what two y. Yeah, I could, but that would give me y's on this side and y's on the other side. I don't want that. Plus five? That's not a, that's not a subtract five. That's a times negative five. For me, the first thing I would do, this is, why, this is one of the hardest ones. I would actually times by four y. To get rid of the division. 
All right, so let's do number two again. Let's times it by four. What do I end up with? Well, this side, that has to be times by four. This has to be times by four. This has to be times by four. Now, what is this part times by four? Negative 4 and the brackets. Negative 5, 3y minus 11. Why is it just that? Well, because timesing by 4 got rid of the divide by 4. That's why I did it. Why is negative 5 not Didn't you expand the bracket? Not yet. I'm not going to do it yet. Why is it? Well, because by timesing by 4, that got rid of the divide by 4, if I multiply that by 4, I'm multiplying by 4 twice. Because this is, for instance, you might, well, you might choose to write this up to you. If I did 10 <coughs> divide by 5, what's the answer? Okay. What is 2 times 5? So if I did 5 times that, gives me that, right? If I did 2 times 8 divided by 4, <coughs> what's the answer to that? 8 divided by 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. If I were to take all of this and multiply it by, sorry, I didn't want to do 2. What if I times that whole lot by 3? No, no, I don't want to. I'm trying. I want to times it by four. Okay. So what would it become? So could I not just get rid of that and that? Yeah. But why didn't I also multiply that by four as well? You already did. I already did. You're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the same thing here, Hugo. <coughs> if I times this then, whole thing by 4, it's like putting 4 times at the beginning. Mm. So that 4 times is undone by the divide by 4. I don't then times this as well by 4. Mm -hmm. so the divide by 4 and then 5 on. No. I, I times by 4 because that's divide by 4. This, this doesn't... Mm -hmm impact yeah but what is important is I do everything by so that is one term this is not so what does it become plus 8y 8y equals 48 now it is a common occurrence that when people divide times to get rid of a divide they do also multiply the top as well but we've talked about that a couple of times which just you don't do that do you what do we do now? And that's Expand it. The Expand the brackets. What does that become? Expand these brackets. Give it a mind view. Negative. Negative 15y. Negative 15y. Minus negative 55. Plus 55. Yeah. Plus. 8y equals 48. Collect like terms. Collect like terms. So 50, negative 15y's plus, so. Negative 7y's. So that would be negative 7y's plus 55 equals 48. Equals 48. You're following it in this stage? Yep. Yeah. This is just recap this, the same stuff over and over. We've been doing this for a long time now, this solving equation stuff. That's why it's so important that we, we did it. We're just finding the way. So. No, we just... What do we do next? No, I don't divide by negative 7 until I've got it on its own. So I could subtract 55. Gives me negative 7y equals... Um, negative, seven. negative seven, which means that one y must equal yep. one. one. Yep. Wait, why didn't you um, um, add seven y? I could have done. Uh, 
but then I would have had to subtract 48. So it just takes two steps, whereas we're happy dealing with negatives at this stage, yeah? We try and avoid negatives if we can, but it's not a problem. Is that my complete solution? No, still have to find the x. How can I do that? Put in the y value. Yes, exactly, Sammy. We do the check process. Um, but actually, instead of doing it, it's not a check anymore. It's a do it. So what I can actually, I can put it in one or two. It doesn't matter. So I'm now going to um, use y equals one in, which one do you want to do? One or one, two? One. Number one? Okay. So number one, so it becomes 4x minus three times one, again, substituting, equals negative 11. So 4x minus three equals negative 11. What do we do next? Add three. Gives me 4x equals negative 8, which means 1x must equal negative 2. Yeah. Right. That's a complicated one. They get much easier. In fact, we're going to learn, not obviously today, but in a couple of lessons time, I'm going to use another method called elimination method, which is the one we would use for this. Right? Um, we get a choice, but we can use this. How could I check my result? Right. Desmos. We can use Desmos. If I'm not allowed Desmos, I would put both of those into both of these, just like we checked before. Again, the mistake people make is thinking, oh, well, if I put my, this answer and this one into the one I used, it just into number one, of course it's going to work. All right? But does it work in both of them is the problem, isn't it? So we, what we do is if I use number one to work out the second number, go back and check. So if I check here, what did we say? It was negative 5 times One. negative two. 2 was x plus 2y. Y was 1. Does that equal 12 is the question. Yeah. So that's positive 10 plus 2 equals 12. Yes, I'm happy. There's my check. Does 10 plus 2 equal 12? Right, the other method would be to chuck it into Desmos. <laughs> Wait, don't we have to do the other thing? We use the other one to figure it out. I used number one to work that out. So like I was just explaining. But we could. Yeah, I, I Use y equals one in equation one. I mean, we can, we can definitely try it. Four times negative two is negative 8, minus 3 times 1 is 3, negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So, good. Right, so, tricky one. Let's have a look at another easier example. Lots there. Okay, now this one's much easier, and I can tell you why. Number one, 4x plus y equals 1. Number two, 2x's plus 3y's equals negative 7. Now, with the previous one, I was a bit like, well, I don't really care which one I rearranged to start with. I made it x equals, that's all. Because I know from my stuff that it was going to be tricky whichever way we did it. However, in this one, I know one of them is easier to rearrange than the other. One. Number one. 
And what do I make it? Y equals or X equals? Y equals. Y equals. So let's rearrange number one. Go for it. Literally add. Uh, rearrange number add. one. This time I'm going to make Y the subject. Now you can see why I'm putting number one and number two, although you aren't going to need to write rearrange number one, make Y. But it's good to label number one and number two so you keep track of where they come from. Because there's going to be a lot of working out on these pages. So what does number one now become? Y equals one minus four. Yeah. Oh, one minus four. Simple as that. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What do we do now? Substitute <coughs> into two. two. I'm going to ask you to do something for me, though. Can you substitute number one into number one for me? Yeah. yeah. Go, can you do it? I want you to actually do it. Maybe back of your book. Back of your book, substitute number one into number one and tell me what happens. Basically, what we are going to do is we're going to replace the y with this in number two. But what I'm after so is, four. what if I replaced this y with that? What do I get? So we get 4x plus 1 minus 4x equals 1. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? It works. Okay. Because we get 4x minus 4x is... Nothing, and we get 1 equals 1. Brilliant. That's easy. What, what does it tell me? What's correct? Exactly. It doesn't do anything. It's made the statement that 1 is equal to 1. What has it not told me? What Y is, what X is, nothing. All right? Now, that comes because you've substituted the same equation into the one that you just rearranged. That's why I label them one and two, because if you rearrange number one, you substitute into number two. If you sub rearrange number two, you substitute into number one. So there is, that's why we keep them labeled, because otherwise you might lose track. So we are now going to replace this y with all of this. So my new number two becomes 2x plus three times, 1 minus 4x equals negative 7. It became 4x plus 1 minus 4x equals 1. Which is a true statement, but it doesn't help us. One does equal one. One does equal one. Unless. Unless it's one apple and one banana, and they're definitely not the same thing. What do we do at this stage? Expand the brackets. We can go straight there. There's no fractions to worry about. So it becomes three. Minus. 12. 12x equals negative 7. And now we can collect like terms. Now we can collect like terms. 2x's minus 12x's is negative 10x. Plus 3 equals negative 7. I've just collected those two together. And then now all we have to do is divide. No, we don't. Minus three, three. Minus three first gives negative 10x equals negative 10, which means x equals 1. And then use x equals 1 in, if you like, this time it doesn't matter which one you choose. We, it should work in both of them, all right? But let's use number one. 4x plus y equals 
1. So 4x plus y equals 1. So we do 4 times 1 is just 4 plus y equals 1. Sorry, I shouldn't have written that. It was 1. So we then do what to find y? Add 4. Minus 4. Good. So we get y equals negative 3. Negative 3. And we could use Desmos. Okay. You'll find where the two lines cross. Where do those two lines cross? At x equals one, one negative three. So I guess um, I did. We've got one more, but let's have a look at the graphing side of it. So you've got your laptop open again. Um, just to check, let's open up Desmos. Let's type those two in. So we've got, what did we have? 4x plus y equals 1. So 4x plus y equals 1. And then we've got 2x plus 3y is negative 7. And if you plot that, it's definitely one negative. we hoped that it was going to cross at one negative. one negative three, and indeed it crosses at yep. right there. one negative three. You got it, bro. Right. Plan moving forward, obviously, um, in this next exercise, we've got all of these they get tricky some of them um sorry not those ones it's um it's blurry right so these ones we've just done a couple uh, we've got graphing and substitution and then the next way is like i said by elimination but on uh, next week we'll get give you a chance to practice some of these you can check using your laptop for graphing method. And then what would it be? When Tuesday or Wednesday, we'll have a look at the elimination method. So that means if you're a bit behind on your notes today or you're not quite sure, watch the video over the weekend.